For 30 days, you must take control of your mind. It will think only about what you've permitted to think. Each day for this 30-day test, do more than you have to do. In addition to maintaining a cheerful, positive outlook, give of yourself more than you've ever done before. Do this knowing that your returns in life must be in direct proportion to what you give. The moment you decide on a goal to work toward, you're immediately a successful person. You're then in that rare and successful category of people who know where they're going. Out of every hundred people, you belong to the top five. Don't concern yourself too much with how you're going to achieve your goal. Leave that completely to a power greater than yourself. All you have to do is know where you're going. The answers will come to you of their own accord. Remember these words from the Sermon on the Mount and remember them well. Keep them constantly before you this month of your test. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. It's as marvelous and as simple as that. In fact, it's so simple that in our seemingly complicated world it's difficult for an adult to understand that all he needs is a purpose and faith. For 30 days, do your best. If you're a salesman, go at it as you've never done before, not in hectic fashion, but with the calm, cheerful assurance that time well spent will give you the abundance in return you deserve and want. If you're a homemaker, devote your 30-day test to complete giving of yourself without thinking about receiving anything in return and you'll be amazed at the difference it makes in your life. No matter what your job, do it as you've never done it before for 30 days. And if you've kept your goal before you every day, you'll wonder and marvel at this new life you've found. Dorothea Brand, outstanding editor and writer, discovered it for herself and tells about it in her fine book, Wake Up and Live. Her entire philosophy is reduced to the words, act as though it were impossible to fail. She made her own test with sincerity and faith, and her entire life was changed to one of overwhelming success. Now you make your test for 30 full days. Don't start your test until you've made up your mind to stick with it. You see, by being persistent, you're demonstrating faith. Persistence is simply another word for faith. If you didn't have faith, you would never persist. If you should fail during your first 30 days, by that I mean suddenly find yourself overwhelmed by negative thoughts, you've got to start over again from that point and go 30 more days. Gradually your new habit will form until you find yourself one of that wonderful minority to whom virtually nothing is impossible. Don't forget the card. It's vitally important as you begin this new way of living on one side of the card, write your goal, whatever it may be. On the other side, write the words we've quoted from the Sermon on the Mount. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. In your spare time during your test period, read books that will help you. Inspirational books like the Bible, Dorothea Brand's Wake Up and Live, the Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and other books that instruct and inspire. Nothing great was ever accomplished without inspiration. See that during these crucial first 30 days, your own inspiration is kept at a peak. Above all, don't worry. Worry brings fear, and fear is crippling. The only thing that can cause you to worry during your test is trying to do it all yourself. Know that all you have to do is hold your goal before you. Everything else will take care of itself.